So I'm very nervous about the Bible study, but we'll see what happens. Friends love, we love the Hello, my friends. Hello, brother. <laughs> what are we on the X? Um, <clears throat> Brother Tatsuya is giving us a lesson on hell. Oh, praise God. Amen. Praise Jesus. I'm going to take notes. Just what I needed. I needed this too. Amen. Amen. Tatsuya. So am I, am I free to start whenever... Um, it's already seven right now, so should I just get right to it? <laughs> Maybe just wait a few more minutes. There might be people. All right. Who... Okay. <laughs> Maybe like seven or five or something. I don't know. Just oh, okay. Few, yeah, but I'm ready to start whenever.
Yeah, just tell me when it's good to start. Tats, are you reading off a of Google Doc? Uh, yeah. Uh, is it cool that after you do the the the, the, the study, if you could perhaps share it with us so we can go through it afterwards? Yeah, it's just notes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Don't feel nervous, brother. You got this. Oh, yeah, and guys, like, um, when we get down, when we get the ball rolling, like, I have a cool activity that we're going to do, but I won't present it yet. But just be excited for that one. <laughs> it's coming up. And you guys will have to help, help to, to do this activity because it'll make you stronger in the Lord. I'll make you able to combat these heresies. So, yeah, I'll make Amen. our church, church Amen. stronger. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I'm excited for that activity. But before we get to that, you know, I'm going to have to explain a few things. Brother John. Hallelujah. There you are. How you doing, brother? I'm growing every day. God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. <clears throat> Maybe it's good enough to start right now because it's almost seven oh five. We have a lot of people in here. Okay, so. Sure. Well, uh, to those of you who showed up, yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so today I'm going to be um, presenting one of the most uh, heavy subjects in um, Christianity, and that's um, the topic about hell. And a lot of the churches don't really like to talk about this place. And a lot of the church, you know, now in America especially, don't take the Bible at face value. Don't take the Bible as the inerrant, inspired, infallible word of God because they want to avoid the repercussions of um, owning up to the responsibility that, you know, that they believe in hell and that they need to go warn people outside of the church that if they don't believe in Jesus Christ, you know, their eternity is at stake. You know, this topic is really... Um, is one of the things that really in America, especially, you know, Satan has attacked. You know, in um nineteen around um nineteen eighties in America. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, we should pray in first. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um. Well, 
Okay, well, uh, dear Heavenly Father, I just uh, thank you, Lord, for just, um, just you know, just this, uh, you know, that I could pr be presenting about this topic, Lord. And, um, you know, another prayer is, uh, it it's really good to pray, Lord, because then you'll be able to guide me, Lord. And um, just uh, thank you that I just got right to it, Lord. Um, Lord, I was, um, thank you, Lord, that, you know, you, you helped me plan this out, Lord. I didn't know how it was going to go, Lord, but... Um, Lord, I, I just thank you, Lord. Just you gave gave me this topic. It was heavy on my heart. Lord, I just thank you, Lord. Um, just use me. Just guide me today, Lord, and what I need to say. Amen. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I guess I guess. Yeah. So I guess what I was saying was that, um, yeah, it's um, a very heavy topic, especially um, I was going to talk about. Oh, yeah. In the 1980s. Um, one of the things that really happened in America was that there was this theology school called Union Theology School. And this person, you know, this uh, head of the theological department gave a speech that really um, split Christianity, Protestant Christianity at that time in half. He said that, you know, um, that as Christians, we should be basing our, um, our thoughts and our beliefs on the Bible and on human reasoning. So at that point, you know, he he put human reasoning above the word of God. And that's what started the whole progressive Christian movement. And the problem is that the whole progressive Christian movement now, they don't believe in the wrath of God. They don't believe in um, a literal heaven or hell. And now they're starting to compromise on major issues like um, abortion, on homosexuality, and trying to twist the word of God. And I think it's um, important as a church, you know, that stands on the word of God to um, hold fast to what the Bible says about hell and not compromise on it, no matter how uncomfortable it is. And um, just, you know, for those of you, probably most of you guys already know my testimony already. But um, yeah, but the thing that really, um, you know, I was, you know, I grew up in a family that was full of witchcraft. My parents, my my parents, my grandparents did witchcraft, and um, and then you know from that from very early on since I was exposed to all of that, you know I felt I became like I felt like I was born this way. Went into the homosexual lifestyle. Um, I I knew about the stories of the Bible growing up actually because there were a lot of Christians in my life who gave me good influence, but. Um, I, I kept on running away from the calling of God. And um, one day, you know, God showed me in the Bible that the way that I was living was wrong. And I got even more offended and I ran even further away from God. And uh, one day, you know, as I it, this was just, uh, you know, as I was going back to the gym one day, you know, at my home, God pulled my spirit out of my body and showed me a glimpse of the gates of hell. And, um, you know, when I was there, I knew that I deserved to be there. But um, one of the things that I've noticed throughout my Christian walk is that this topic of hell is really what divides a false Christian from a true Christian. And it puts, it's a topic that separates us, um, separates a true believer, a true Christian from the world. And um, I remember the um, first time right after I was born again, God is so good. I thought that I was the only crazy person who believed in hell, who believed in the Bible. And uh, at that time, I was living in Mountain View. So God led me to Calvary Chapel, Mountain View. And that's the first time I heard, you know, fire and brimstone preaching. And the fear of God hit me. And um, that's when I fully surrendered to the Lord. So um, I, the fire and brimstone preaching is not old. Like, this is something that will really... Um, convict the person and so that they could be led to Christ. Um, and just just two quick things and then we'll jump right into the activity. You know, this topic of hell is very heavy and it's very serious because, you know, D.L. Moody, he was a preacher. He, he said that nobody should preach about hell without tears in their eyes. And so it really just shows that Back in the day, where there, when there was the first and second great awakening in America, many of the preachers in America took, um, t really took hell very seriously. And, you know, before they would go on the pulpits, they would fast and pray. Um, 
And a lot of the fear of God was still in this nation because of the hell, preaching about hell. And um, just some books I recommend about hell, if anybody wants to dig deeper into this topic, is um, there's a book called Hell Under Fire. It's more theological, but it has really good um, Bible verses in it. And one of the books I referenced in, in order to help me do this study is um, 23 Minutes in Hell. That's another really good book. And so, yeah, so I'm just going to dive into the activity now. Praise Jesus. Okay, so... Um, so basically, um, you know, there's three common heresies about hell. And so my question to all of you right now is, do you guys know the three heresies about hell? Um, that there's uh, purgatory. Yeah, purgatory is one of them, but I didn't include them. But that's a good, good one. Yeah, um, I think. I think one of them could be the Jehovah Witnesses view of hell, that it's no burning, it's just emptiness. And yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna present something close on this one to that one. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Anyone else have thoughts? That hell's not real. Mm, that's another one too. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean a lot of that's true. I mean a lot of the church doesn't, you know, just denies hell. But within the people who believe in hell, you'll be surprised how many heresies there are. So, I'm going to read, um, oh yeah, Sheol State of Sleep, yeah. Well, I'm going to, so right now I'm just going to act like somebody who believes in one of these heresies. Okay, so I'm going to go to, so um, let me pretend that I'm Bob, okay, and I come into CFM. Um, San Francisco, and I'm going to corrupt the church, okay? And, um, <laughs> and okay, so let's see. So, I'm in Genesis 3 right now, and, um, okay, and so, so, hey guys, so I'm actually Bob, I'm new to the church, and, um, you know, one of the things that I've been really thinking about recently is, like, how people aren't going to burn in hell for the rest of eternity. You know, actually, I think it's really cruel for God that he'll make us suffer for the rest of eternity. And actually, you know, it's interesting because I was actually reading Genesis uh, 3, 23 through, uh, let's see, 24. And actually, God says that, you know, since we've sinned, since we've sinned, you know, we're actually not, since we've sinned, you know, the wages of sin is death. So that means like, after we die, you know, God might send us to hell, but hell is very temporary. Look at this, guys, in Genesis 3. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of light and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of to keep the way of the tree of life hey so you see guys like in genesis 3 it says that you know like god didn't want you know god didn't want you know adam and eve to live forever so he blocked them from the tree of life so look at that like like so if we're sinners you know we die and we perish eventually you know we might burn in hell for some time it might be painful but then we're gonna puff we're gonna one day cease to exist so, hey, so if somebody came up to you and said that, how would you combat that? How would you combat that? If somebody came up and said, well, in Genesis 3, you know, it says that, you know, if we sin, sin against God, we cease to exist. Like, how would you guys respond to that? Um, I, I would reply with the, the scripture that's in Revelation, like, I think 13 or 14, where the angel says the smoke of their term, the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. Yeah. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. Anybody hey, else? I'm, hey, Bob. Uh, I'm Sister Ariano. Welcome to Christ Forgiveness Ministries. Uh, I'm I'm so happy that you're here, and and we're going to you know, talk about hell. And and I'm very curious about your view on Genesis three. Um, Jesus actually taught a lot about hell, and he he warned a lot of his disciples and and um, it's a place that he really warned against, you know, um, 
do not go there. And it's very interesting because in Luke cha- uh, Luke 12, chapter 5, uh, Jesus says, <clears throat> I mean, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 12, verse 5, Jesus says, um, but I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him after which he hath killed, uh, after which he hath killed, sorry, <laughs> he mm-hmm. hath killed, hath power to cast in hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. So, um, yeah, I, I just I just feel like I, I would just bring up a, a few verses about how Jesus spoke about hell and it's a real place. Hmm. Yeah. Well, okay, that's good. Yeah. Well. Um. Yeah, like um. Yeah, no, that's a good response. Yeah, and uh, I like Ryan's response too. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know. I mean, what should I, I would actually, um, let's see, anybody else has anything else or? Is yeah, I would it? say that uh, <clears throat> hell, lake of fire is a place of eternal torment. Right. Uh, Mark says that uh, the worm will never die. So it's not just an, it's not just a one time annihilation and then you never feel it, but uh, you will constantly be in torment. Uh, you may actually even want to die and you won't be able to right right yeah oh definitely Can I yeah have one more uh-huh yeah sure go ahead um this is about the mark of the beast the people who take it but i guess it can still go with it it's revelation 14 9 through 10 it yeah. says then a third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Right. And then it says, yeah, like you said earlier, the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they shall have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image receiveth the mark of his name yeah well um you know if you look carefully at genesis 3 um well actually i i just want to go to john really well i mean i have the verses memorized it's uh john three sixteen. you know it says for god so loved the world that whosoever should believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life and um you know and then in john three thirty six, it says he who believes in the son shall see life but he who does not believe in the son shall not see life but the wrath of god remains upon him so if you look at genesis 3 like i tried to yeah well this is the typical annihilationist argument it's like um well they're gonna say like oh you know like death means like you know cease to exist so you know, one day in hell, like we're going to cease to, if there's the wicked will cease to exist, but that's not what it says in Genesis 3. So if you look at um, what happened in Genesis 3, when Adam and Eve first bit out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, what happened first was, was death. But the way that it happened was that it, you know, when they first disobeyed God, spiritual death came in first, you know, their physical death was much later. You know, they lived for many years, like over a hundred years. And so when when in Genesis three, when it says that, you know, um, when it says that, you know, God um, prevented Adam and Eve from taking the tree of life and eating and living forever, that's talking more about spiritual life. But in the state of spiritual death, you know, if, you know, uh, if we sin, we're in the state of spiritual death. And if we're in spiritual death, that doesn't mean that, you know, spiritual death doesn't mean cease to exist. It's rather like a continual state of like existing. Um, and if we die as sinners, of course, we all know, like, we're not going to go to a better place after we die. Like, it's going to be, you know, like it says in Revelation fourteen eleven, like the smoke of their torment is going to ascend forever and ever. And we're not going to have any rest day nor night. So, um, so yeah, so I mean, if somebody comes up to you at Genesis 3, just let them know here that it's not talking about 
physical life, but it's talking about spiritual life. So God actually was preventing Adam and Eve from gaining spiritual life um, in in the, these last chapter, these last verses of the Bible, or sorry, in the last verses of Genesis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So there's another thing that, <laughs> another heresy that might come up. And so let me just pretend that I'm, this time, let's say I'm, um, I'm another heretic and I come up to you guys and I'm like, well, hey guys, so I'm like new to CFM. And so I actually found out guys that like, there's actually, a, there might be a second chance after you know, if even if you die as a sinner, you know, there might be a second chance. If you're in hell, you know, I I think I could make it into heaven even if I die as a sinner. Well, look at this. It says that um it says here, you know, in first Peter chapter three, for Christ hath hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein a few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. So look at this. In First Peter chapter 3, verses 19, it says that, you know, Christ came and preached the spirits in prison. So that must mean that, that must mean that we have a second chance. You know, sinners have a second chance in hell. So if somebody came up to you and said that, how would you guys respond? This is another tricky one. Um, I, I don't really know exactly, but I heard this a while ago. Someone explained it. I think it was like uh, the people who he went, who I think it was Peter, right? Talking about how Christ went down in, into and, and spoke to them, right? Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one, yeah. Yeah, then, then I, I think he explained it like, Jesus went down to speak to the people who, who were of God, who were, uh, who died believing. Uh, I, I think it's like believing in the Lord. He kind of preached his, like, okay, I don't want to sound like I'm teaching something. I'm not. I'm just trying to explain it. Uh, never mind. I, I don't know, to be honest. Never mind. I just It just leaves my head. I can't really explain it properly, so I'll just not even say it. But one thing I would say is... Uh, just one scripture that came up uh it's hebrews 9 27 mm -hmm. uh it is appointed for men to die once but after that the judgment right right that's a good one too this is an un, un not fully fleshed out thought but i'm thinking that jesus is right now seated at the right hand of god he's already ascended uh into heaven and that's where he's at right now. So if you die right now and you go to hell, Jesus is not going to be there to to uh, to rescue you as as he was probably potent potentially preaching the gospel um, back then when he was you know in uh, descended after his death on the cross before he had resurrected. Right. Yeah. I'm not sure if yeah. That's just <laughs> well. That's just one thought. Brother Tots, can you say that verse one more time? Yeah, so it's um it's um it's actually this is um first Peter chapter three verses nineteen, by which he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which were sometime disobedient, once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water. So some people might come and say, well, hey, well, there's second chances for the sinner in hell just by quoting that verse, you know. So I'm, um, I'm asking, well, how, how can you respond, you know? Um, I, it's, it sounds like there might have been no place at the time for individuals who, who died back before Christ had paid the penalty for sin. And I wouldn't say like there's a holding cell or anything like that. But as he said, they descended or he descended. So whether or not he, he descended into Sheol 
or some sort of subdivision of Sheol, because even scripture talks about how the heaven, uh, like uh, Satan fell from, from the heavens and how there's spiritual wickedness in high places. So it's almost like there's degrees of like, of like the heavens and, and hell, right? Where there's going to be higher condemnation for teachers and there's going to be, uh, cause you know, they're held to a higher standard. So there's higher condemnation. So what's regular condemnation versus higher condemnation? Um, so it, it, it like almost appears like, well, maybe those people who had passed away believing in the Lord, although they still had, you know, not been cleansed of their sins, right? They could ask the Lord, you know, forgive them, but the blood of Jesus hadn't been spilt yet for their penalty, no remission just yet. And that this was even before Abraham or Israel started doing animal sacrifices to cover for the sin, not necessarily removing it, but covering over it. Um, so I don't think our Lord who is merciful for those that died believing in him and holding fast to him, even though they like fell short of the glory of God. I don't think that he necessarily sent them to the deepest, darkest pits of Sheol or what have you, but maybe they were in some sort of other like shallow Sheol, so to say. And as Jesus descended, right. As Jesus descended, he talked and preached the gospel to them. And because they had died, you know, believing in the Lord and he went through scripture, through scripture, or however he explained the gospel to them as Jesus did to the apostles. So he did to them, then they would accept it. Right. Because even, even, uh, Jesus himself said, Oh, if someone raises up from the dead, if they don't believe, if they don't believe the, um, you know, the, the prophets, they won't believe someone who raised up from the dead. So if Jesus if the people who died not believing in the prophets and not believing in and not believing in the Lord, when Jesus came down and tried to tell and talk to the, to maybe them or maybe other people, they wouldn't have believed him at that point either. And, and it almost goes back as well to like, you know, what you mentioned in Genesis three, like I read somewhere about why Jesus, why God kicked Adam and Eve out of the, you know, prevented them from eating the, the tree of the fruit of everlasting life because they would be confirmed in that state of sin. They wouldn't die. Um, they would be forever um, with their sin. Um, so that's kind of one thing I, I, I looked at and I, I thought um, that people get, when they die, they're, they're, um, they're released. But if they live forever, then they're confirmed, if that makes some sense. Yeah, well, yeah, no, that that's, that's good. Um... I guess that's one way of looking at it. Um, yeah, no, I mean, like, okay, so with this verse, like, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 19, it's, like, one of those, like, I heard from, like, this um, theology professor. He He's a Christian. He studies the Word of God. He once told me about this verse. Well, I mean, this is, like, the, one of those passages which has, like, multiple, like, interpretations just because of its kind of its ambiguity and its, like, it's uncleanness. I, I I don't know. It's not really too clear, but you know, I would, yeah, just, just for like, for the sake of time, like, I mean, um, how I would see this interpret this verse as is like, well, actually like Christ was in Noah, you know, preaching the gospel to the people during Noah's, or I mean, I mean, yeah, like Christ was in, um, Oh, what should I say? Like he was like with Noah as he was preaching to the people to get a aboard the ark. Um, and that's kind of the way that I would see this as, but um yeah, but maybe um yeah, but maybe it, it's true that, you know, before Christ there were people who didn't couldn't didn't hear the gospel and so now Christ is preaching to them. But um yeah. But yeah, but that's true. There's like, it says that Christ suffered once and for all for sins. There's like Hebrews 9.27, it's appointed unto men to die once and then the judgment. So that was, would kind of be how I would combat 
combat people who are who would probably try to use this verse and say, well, hey, there's second chances, you know, for people if they reject Christ. Um, there's nowhere in scripture other than probably maybe the, yeah, just this verse. Um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, whoops, sorry. I feel like if there's a scripture on something, there has to be at least another reference. Right, exactly, Bible, yeah. Because, or else it's just going to be one verse, you're going to take it out of context, there's going to be nothing to, to, to build off of, it's just one verse. Right, right, yeah. Um, yeah. I, um, I mm -hmm. would probably, yeah, I... I wrote something in the chat that um, I would probably ask Bob if he's reading the Bible in context, like if he's reading this whole chapter and not just like picking one verse um, and explain, you know, how God is holy and how sin separates us from him. Um, <clears throat> there's, uh, it's very interesting because a few verses above uh, verse 19, chapter uh, chapter three first peter it says oh it says right here in 16 and 17 having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as evil as of evil doers they may be ashamed that that falsely accuse your good conversation in christ for it is better if the will of god be so that ye suffer for well doing than for evil doing so i would just tie it into like how sin separates them from god and if he's reading the whole chapter or the whole book. Oh, and tell and encourage him to keep reading. Right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It's um yeah, and that that's good too. Yeah, no, because in context it's actually this verse isn't really talking about what's going on right now. It's talking about Noah and back in his day. Yeah. I think verse 19 and 20. So yeah, no, but context is very important. Oh, and that that perfectly segues into my the next thing that we're going to do. So um, can somebody open their Bible to Numbers chapter 16? Um, and so if, um, let's see. And then could somebody open their Bible to um, Jonah chapter 2? So um. And then, um, can a third person open their Bible to Isaiah 38, verses 10 through 18? Amen. Oh, okay, man. I'm on number 16. Okay, number 16. Um, let's see. Number Just a quick thought. Sorry. Yeah, I, I go like ahead, what go Harrison ahead. wrote in, uh, with regards to your response to your original question, um, Tatsuya. Yeah. It's drawn from a parable where um, Abraham's talking to the man, um, the man, the rich man who was suffering in hell. And it says, you know, there's this great chasm fixed between us and you, Abraham, talking to um, the man who's rich, the rich man, that those who want to pass over from here to you cannot, neither can those from there cross over to us. Um, you know, I, I know there's probably a lot of other verses that speak to kind of the, the finality of, um, you know, being in hell, but I think this is a pretty clear one as well. Yeah. Um, just want to highlight that. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Oh, yeah, no problem. Diverge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, has anybody turned to Jonah chapter 2? Um, or actually, um, hey, Sister Ariana, could you read from um, actually number 16 versus... Um, well, hmm, this is a long chapter. Hmm. It's okay. <clears throat> okay. Um. Yeah. This is. I see. Um. Uh, okay. Um. Hmm. 
How about... Could you read from verse 28 to 32 from in Numbers chapter 16? Uh, yes. Cool. Um, 20, yes, 28 to 32, you said? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die in the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up with all that pertain, pertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appointed unto Korah and all their gods, goods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I think I'll just finish off with verse 35. And they and all that appertain to them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed upon them and they perished from among the congregation so guys so from reading just i know that you know numbers chapter 16 is very long but from these verses what can you guys understand about hell about this place called hell from just reading from numbers chapter 16 there's a lot of things that this verse reveals That there's um there's punishment. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I like how it says that the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up. It's like a it's like kind of predicting what will happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Sister Hannah said they go quickly down. Yeah, that's also true. Yeah. Uh, hell is associated, yes, with punishment. It's also associated with like an area below in the earth right right yeah that's true yep yeah so yeah like you guys were saying yeah hell is a place that's beneath the earth um yeah well hell is the place where people will actually go down like i mean they went down alive but um you know it 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 just really shows that, you know, that if they were because they rebelled against God, they went down there really quickly. And so that's also something that's true, too. Um, I have one question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think th like there, there are some testimonies of people like that one guy who talked about going to hell for 23 minutes. Right. Uh, like from the book. I'm not completely sure if he if he said this. I, I only saw it once about seeing people in hell like people so if nobody is in hell because um like it's it says in revelation i think that um hell will one day be cast into the lake of fire so what, what does it mean by like if someone goes to hell they see people right if no one's there Does that make sense well <laughs> i i no, that's sorry. I'm kind of unclear. No, I'll say it one more time. Yeah. So, uh, some people might say that, that they've seen people in hell, like visions of people in hell, like experiencing it. At the same time, uh, hell isn't in hell hasn't been cast into the lake of fire yet. So, how would they see people in hell? I mean, it talks that verse talks about people being what again, like thrown into hell right yeah and so um yeah so in this passage um it's just that Korah and these other men rebelled against Moses and so uh, Moses said that well God's gonna open up the earth and he's gonna swal swallow Korah and you guys because you rebelled against me into this pit into the the this pit you know hell um yeah, I mean, in this specific passage, it doesn't really talk about um, people being there or people seeing other people there in hell. 
but you know, but I think I'm and I'm gonna finish um, off the study with Luke chapter 16. But Luke 16 does talk about you know um, there was this big chasm that was fixed. The rich man was in hell, and then there was Lazarus, you know, on in Abraham's bosom, and um, he, the rich man was t saying to um, Lazarus, you know, to dip the tip of his finger into his tongue so that his tongue may be cooled um because he was he didn't have any water in hell he didn't have anything you know that we enjoy up here so yeah so i think in that sense i think there's you know right now you know currently people in hell but obviously you know when christ comes back to this earth you know hell is going to be cast into the lake of fire yeah what does that mean hmm um what does what mean like you mean the what does it mean for hell to be cast into the lake of fire well it's in um it's in the book of revelation so actually um you know right now there's like um uh, what do you call it like there's a temporary um heaven and hell so you know when we die you know like it says in james you know the spirit without the body is dead so with so faith is faith without works is dead. So basically, when we die right now, um, our spirit departs from our body and it either goes to heaven or hell, depending on whether or not the person accepted Christ in this lifetime. And, um, you know, currently, you know, if you die right now, you know, and you were unbeliever, you would go to the place called hell. But when Jesus Christ comes back, you know, like it says in I think it was Revelation 20 verses um 10 you know it says here um you know when jesus christ comes back you know um well anyways our spirit goes to hell but that hell you know when jesus christ comes back will be cast into the lake of fire and i think it was revelation 20 verses 10 yeah yeah which says um wait a moment um yeah okay so yeah revelation 20 verses 14 and it says and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death so right there you know in revelation chapter 20 the context is that in revelation chapter 19 jesus christ has come back into this world to judge the world and to bring the final judgment and after that you know um all the people who are in hell um you know they're they're gonna be judged according to their works and then in verse 14 and death and hell will you know were cast into the lake of fire so hell is going to be cast into the lake of fire so right now like hell and the lake of fire are two different places the lake of fire doesn't have anybody there yet but when christ comes back you know all the people that are in hell will be put into the lake of fire yeah does that make sense i mean um if i may ask you um i don't mean to throw you off here yeah no problem um in verse 12 and uh another book was opened the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and right. death and hell were cast into the lake of fire there's there seems to be the most common idea that hell is the place you go after judgment but it seems like there'll be a judgment after you go to hell according to this verse right well the judgment happens when um when christ comes back um and people are yeah so like um in hell like people are aren't judged yet but um yeah but when christ, jesus christ comes back yeah that's when their judgment's gonna happen yeah then why are they sent to hell um well it's um i actually don't have the answer for that that's just the bible um what the bible says is that you know um that there is a heaven hell and then after that the judgment you know my next, um, my next question is what happens when death and hell are cast into the lake of fire what is the second death exactly 
Well, yeah, well, oh, yeah. So the second death doesn't, you know, cease to exist. It's a, um, what, what do you call this? I mean, it's, it's Separation just... from God? Huh? Separation from God? Yeah, well, it's a separation from God, but it's also, um, I think it's also like a judgment, you know, um, like they, they've become judged for their sins. So in that sense, they become like spiritually, or I'm, I'm not sure, actually. I don't really know what the second death is. Yeah. Um. Could I? Yeah. Could I um. So I I know that the lake of fire, um, you know, got its and and hell being thrown into it. I I, I believe it's like God's final judgment. Um. Right. Because it's it's a place where um Satan is going to be punished, uh, day in and day out. Um for eternity and also the false prophet and um the the antichrist and um it, it talks about that in revelations chapter 19 so um oh and it's for the demons as well the lake of fire so it's 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 like god's uh final judgment and uh the way i see it and when you die um you you go to hell like yeah like the temporary place because it's it's an immediate um separation from god um uh, but but yeah there i i believe yeah there is a day where we're all going to be judged the books are going to be open and um we're going to have to give an account you know for what we've done so yeah I, it's like it's like two separate events I, I think the way i see it yeah um yeah, that just reminded me, you know, like the Bible says, like the wages of sin is death. So I think the second death, I think Kevin might have said this. Yeah, eternal damnation. Yeah. Yeah, it's the final sentencing. Yeah. Um, I remember I just had these few things. One sec. My John um, 5. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So one other thing that I just really want to go over just real quickly, because I think we're on the topic of like the final judgment and hell. So, um, so in the Bible, you know, it talks about, you know, we go, you know, the people who didn't accept Christ will go to hell and then Jesus Christ comes back. And then there's the, the, um, the, what do you call it? The, the you know they're going to go into the lake of fire after that but um the bible talks about two resurrections and so i just want to quickly read here um they who have done good into in the resurrection of the just and they who have done evil in the resurrection of the unjust john 5 29 and it says um here in daniel 12 2 and many who sleep in the dust of the earth will wake some to everlasting life, but others to everlasting um, shame and contempt. So what's going to happen when Jesus Christ comes back is that both the righteous and the wicked, you know, those who believed in Christ and those who are unbelievers, they're both going to be raised from the dead. And um, the first resurrection, that revelation, you know, the resurrection of the the just, you know, the resurrection of ever everlasting life, like those believers are going to be raised up in more glorious bodies and then they're going to spend the rest of their eternity with christ after he comes back but that's not the same thing for the um for the unbeliever or the sinner you know they're going to be raised up in bodies that are more corruptible and then they're going to be cast into the lake of fire and i think that's also another um reason why the revelation talks about the second death is um is because you know they're going to be raised up um, in the resurrection of shame and everlasting contempt. And, and then after that, you know, they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. So in that sense, you know, they're going through another second death, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So, um, I don't know. There's somebody. Um, oh, yeah, it's uh, almost eight. Okay. Um, 
Hey, Brother John, could you read um, Jonah chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, if that's okay? Yeah, hold on. Oh, okay, cool. Jonah what? Uh, Jonah chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Two, one to ten. Yeah. Uh huh. And jo huh? Yep. Uh -huh. Good. Okay. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the fish, uh, fish's belly, and he said, "I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and He answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and You heard my voice. For You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the sea." And the floods surrounded me. All your billows and your waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight. Yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The water surrounded me, even to my soul. The deep closed around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountains. The earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought up my life from the pit. O Lord my God, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice to you. With a voice of thanksgiving, I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah on the dry land. Yeah. So from this passage, guys, um, you, you know, so just, uh, yeah, thank you for reading this, Brother John. Um, yeah, just from the context of Jonah, you know, Jonah was asked to preach to Nineveh um, but by God. But Jonah was like, no, I don't want to preach to Nineveh. You know, I don't, Jonah didn't want them to repent and turn to God. So he ran away from God and Jonah, um, so the, the, the whale swallowed Jonah and in Jonah chapter two, Jonah is in the belly of this whale um, or, or the belly of this fish. But um, yeah, but what's interesting about this chapter, you know, there's references about hell, you know, and it says here in Jonah chapter two, verses two, it says out of the belly of hell, I cried. So People, so many scholars, biblical scholars believe that while Jonah was in the belly of the whale, he actually saw a glimpse of um, the afterlife in in hell. And um, and also this is one of those things um, here in verse six. It says the earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet thou hast brought up my life from corruption. O Lord, my God. So in Verses six, you know, some people believe that Jonah even saw the bars in in hell or yeah. So so basically, yeah, he he did see a glimpse of hell. Um, yeah, that's just another reference if people ask like, well, where's hell in the Old Testament? Well, Jonah chapter two is a great place to go to to just show that, you know, even the even in the Old Testament, they believe that there was something more after this life it wasn't just the physical yeah um yeah um let's see um yeah another great place to go to to show if there you know that hell that there was a literal place called hell um and i don't know yeah is um isaiah chapter 38 verses 10 through 18, and I think I'll just read that quickly. 
um, in Isaiah, um, in Isaiah chapter, yeah, um, yeah, so here it says, and in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. And I, I said, I shall not see the Lord, even the Lord, in the, um, in the land of the living. I shall behold, uh, I shall behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. My age is departed, and is removed from me as a sh as a shepherd's tent. I have cut off like a weaver, like a weaver my life. He will cut me off from pinning sickness from day even to night. Wilt thou make an end of me? I reckon till morning that as a lion, so will he break all my bones. From day even to night, wilt thou make an end of me? Like a crane or a swallow, so did I chatter. I did mourn as a dove. Mine eyes fail with looking upward, O Lord. I am oppressed. Undertake for me. What shall I say? He hath both spoken unto me, and himself hath done it. I shall go softly all my ears in the bitterness of my soul. Um, and then it says, yeah, in verse 18, for the, de for the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down to the pit cannot hope for thy truth. The living, the living, he shall praise thee, as do this day the father to the children shall make known thy truth. So um, in verse... Um, yeah, so in verse um in verse 10, it talks about the gates of the grave. Some say some lo lots of translations say like the gates of Sheol, so the gates of hell. Um and then in verse 18, you know, it says that um they that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. So that's another Old Testament reference is that, you know, in Isaiah 38, Hezekiah was about to die. And uh, many people say that, you know, right before he died, he saw a glimpse of, of hell or what would happen after he died. And so he was crying out to God for life in this, in this state, in Isaiah 38. Um, yeah. So, so far, does anybody else have questions? I have another question. Yeah, sure. Um... In Hebrews chapter 11, mm -hmm. the chapter about faith, it lists all the saints um, and the fathers all having died. Um, and in verse 13, it says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. And again, in verses 39 and 40, it lists all these famous, the famous family. It says, These all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. This implies that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all, everybody else it listed, is still dead waiting for the resurrection waiting to go to heaven for us mm, i see what do you think about that well um well right now i i believe that um and we'll we'll, we'll see this in luke 16 um i believe that right now they're in um they're in heaven but yeah, but they haven't been resurrected yet because Christ hasn't come back. So that's that's what's true. Um, I believe that, you know, that when they meet Christ, obviously, they're going to be raised up. They're going to receive their promise. Um, what's going what's gonna to happen after they get resurrected from resurrected from heaven? Well, yeah, well, right now they don't have like a physical body in heaven. But when Christ comes back, like, they're going to receive a physical body. Yeah. So, 
That's in the new heaven and the new earth. Yeah, in the new heaven, new earth. Yeah, correct. Um, I have one verse. Mm -hmm. So in Ecclesiastes 12, 7, it says, uh, Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. So maybe um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are are in heaven, but they're not like their spirits are just with God or with God. But once the resurrection happens, your spirits are going to come back and they're going to be resurrected in the, the glorified bodies. Does that make sense? Right, right, right. Yeah. And what, what verse was that again? I'm sorry, I missed it. It was Ecclesiastes twelve seven. Oh, twelve seven. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think this verse is just trying to say like what happens at the moment we die. Then the dust returned to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So that's just what happens when we physically die on this earth, I believe. Just yeah. Like, so yeah. so when like Abraham died. Right. That is wouldn't that be what happened to him, right? He just right. The spirit just returned to God, but when the resurrection happens is when the spirit will return and be resurrected with his body. His right, glorified. with his body, yeah. With his glorified body. Yeah. Um uh yeah. So um yeah, I just want to bring this, like, like Bible study to a close. I, I know that I, I have my notes. I have so much verses on this, you know, this topic. Um, If you guys want to check it out later, I, I'll just post it, like, right after we're done. But um, does anybody want, does anybody, can somebody volunteer to read Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through um 19 through 31 just to the end um yeah and just um as 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 the person's reading um i want you guys to think about okay well what what are the people in hell wishing for us right now here on this earth you know so that's some one question i want you guys to think about as you read luke chapter 16 so does anybody can does anybody want to volunteer to read luke chapter 16 this is the last thing that we're going to do. Then all will be done. Yeah. The entire thing or how much? What oh, oh, yeah. Just from uh, verses 19 through 31. Sure. I'll read. Sure. Okay. So you said Luke 16 verses 19 to 31? Yes. Mm hmm Okay. <laughs> Try to do this without coughing. <laughs> there was a certain rich man was clothed in purple and fine linen <coughs> and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs, with, with the crumbs, which fell from the riches, the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and <laughs> was buried and in hell. He lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now is he... Now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great goal fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. <laughs> Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went <clears throat> to them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, or, and he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, 
the, the one rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, thank you for reading that, Kevin. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so after reading that pa oh sorry, after reading that passage, um, what are the two things that this rich man desired once he was in this place of torment called hell? Uh, he desired to to get a dip, just water, just to have a drop of water, and he desired that um, someone would go tell people about this place and tell them to, um, I think it was repent. Yeah, 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 to repent. So, so they wouldn't go to this place of torment. Right. Yeah. Like and yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Verse twenty eight. It says, "For I have five brethren, that he may." testify unto them lest they also come to this place of torment and abraham saith unto them they have moses and the prophets let them hear let them hear them yeah so they so it's um so the people in hell right now you know they're desiring that somebody would come and warn their family members even so that they could avoid coming to this place you know and i think that's one of the that should be you know our prayer as a as a church you know that we pray for each other that we pray for our family members and um and you know one thing that i want to testify i want to be very vulnerable about with you guys because i trust you guys is um that you know when i was a very young christian you know one big regret that i have is that i didn't talk about i didn't share the gospel with one of my family members while I was on a family trip back to Japan in summer 2019. And the sad thing is that a few months later, you know, my family, my grandmother and, you know, my other relatives, they passed away. So I couldn't talk to them about, about this place, you know, and the gospel, you know, because I was at that time, you know, I was living in sin, you know, I was, I wasn't living for the Lord too well. And so that's what happened. And so that really um, woke me up. And the first passage that God showed me after that happened was, um, after I heard the news was Luke 16. And um, what really came upon my heart really strongly at that time was, um, you know, was that God was telling me, well, you know, right now, you know, your family members are glad that you're a believer in Christ because you won't be going to the same place as they would. But, you know, yeah, at the same time, great. you know, I have this uh, great regret. Can you, yeah. Can you handle it? It's clean. Mm hmm. What was it? Sorry. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess that that was one of those things that really last it, it still it still pains me to know that you know I didn't witness to them but one of the things is that you know um I think that by reading this passage like it really got me to really think about well what's if you know why why should I take my Christian walk seriously you know why shouldn't I live in sin why shouldn't I you know you know, these are some things, you know, like I really never had thought about before until that incident took place as a Christian. And so that's why that's where I want to end this. I know I'm ending on a very heavy note, but um, yeah, I just wanted to share my heart. And um, yeah, and this 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 passage is very this passage, like after reading it over and over again, this should persuade us, this should encourage us to even witness to the lost, to people we don't know and people we do know. Because, um, you know, while people are alive, you know, there's still hope for them. There's still hope for them to turn to Christ. You know, Christ is always willing to forgive them. And yeah, and I think what's really important is, um, is really just fasting and praying to the Lord. And just being fully surrendered to the Lord and not having any fear of man or what men are going to say. You know, because the Bible says not to not fear man who could kill the body, but fear the one who could cast both body and soul in hell. So, you know, so after that incident, that, that thing that happened with my family, you know, I got even more on fire um, to preach the gospel to my lost family members. And I remember, you know... Um, 
that was around the yeah so in fall 2019 you know i really started to preach the gospel you know i i handed out gospel tracts to my neighbors at that time i was living in palo alto so i would go around door to door hand out gospel tracts and yeah so that's how i started my evangelism was door to door knocking and telling people about jesus and that was really hard i did that until um until COVID hit and then i still kept on pushing and then eventually I prayed to the Lord and the Lord led me to the SOS house in SOS ministries. And now I'm here. So, um, yeah, so I think, um, yeah, but if you do God's will and evangelize to other people, like I, I, one thing that I could tell you guys is that God will lead you to the right people, to the right place. And God would always be with you. You know, when I started to evangelize, I was so surprised that, man, like I'm becoming more intimate with the Lord. I'm starting to understand the gospel more clearly. I'm starting to understand my faith more clearly too. And I'm starting to get to know who Jesus truly is because I'm, you know, studying the, uh, because I have more of an urgency to study the Bible and to know how to explain that well to other people. So, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So guys, thank you so much for, um, for yeah just uh attending this bible study yeah i know that um amen. yeah thank we went through a lot but praise jesus amen thank, thank you so much you, brother. for taking us on yeah thank you. brother god bless you yeah god bless you brother. yeah god bless you uh yeah and i'll post my notes down on the chat in the chat yeah just uh thanks for this Todd. So yeah yeah you. yeah definitely yeah um yeah. Kind of woke me up a little bit too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good too. Yeah. You know, this topic, you know, I, I believe that, you know, it's uncomfortable. But, you know, from time to time, you know, this is some things that we need to think about. And that's what I noticed like very early on in my Christian walk. I really, actually, I ran away from God for a very long time because I didn't want to admit that there was eternal hell. And so, but, you know, but praise Jesus, you know, God woke me up to the truth and now I'm here. So praise Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise Jesus. I'm so grateful to have you, brother. Oh, thank you. Amen. Yeah. God bless you, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Todd, can you change the setting for the document? Oh. Um, yeah, I can see. Oh, no, I can see it now. Oh, okay. I okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I, I put down a lot of Bible verses on the document, but yeah, I knew that that'll be, that might just be too much, so. Yeah, but anyways, <laughs> more is more is better than less. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Well, praise Jesus, man. Yeah, praise, praise Jesus. Amen. Praise Jesus. Worthy. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Thank Jesus. you, Lord. Man, thank you, thank you, yeah. God. Thank you, man. Good. Yeah. Okay. God bless you all. Yeah. God bless you all too. Yeah. Good Bye. night. Sleep well. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Okay. Praise Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. Oh my goodness. Praise the Lord.
Oh my goodness. Praise Jesus. Amen.